Thank you. Thank you very much. We are so greatly honored to have, uh, you know, these days there are many introductions of men of God and uh, some I don't know, you know, just, just the way we introduce people. But the man of God who is going to speak to us, in actual fact, have even begged him if, if he would find it as he's speaking to us. I say, uh, Bishop, you have the whole afternoon and we are here to hear you. Yeah, hey, you're here to hear you. We're here to hear you. <laughs> there are people who touch and affect nations. As well as we know, they are also village champions. But there are people who touch. This man of God is one of my seniors in the ministry. He's a father in this nation. He's a man who knows how to bend his knees and make sure that something has changed. He's one of the fathers not more seen, but one of the fathers who have done us proud and made us proud in this nation. Maybe, maybe Bishop, you are one of the people in the this nation that have ever had a confrontation with, with a witch. You, you know, there, there, there's some kind of, you know, village witches who don't even surprise, you know. So, you know, just they're full of drama. You know, they're not even dangerous. <laughs> they, you know, they, they, how many know even witchcraft, there are also some levels, you know. You, you know, like... I've said, given this testimony, Bishop, before somebody came and told me, Mom, can you imagine? Somebody put a snake at my doorstep. I said, was it dead or alive? <laughs> Make a mistake to say it was dead. I said, ah, we do with live snakes. <laughs> then I said, was it big enough we make shoes and make belts? <laughs> a man who has made it possible and gone ahead of us and set, set spiritual pathways one of these days, I would want to have the honor of speaking in our nation of those who have set spiritual pathways. And one of them is the man who is about to speak to us. Some of us are preaching the gospel because of his obedience to Christ to go and demolish altars that have been raised and laid to even against a nation. Bishop, we are so honored. I know some time back, God <laughs> spoke to me and uh, I got in touch with you. And excellence, thank you very much. And, uh, and also, uh, we met a few of us and uh, Bishop Lai, he's also another one who has been there. In actual fact, also he was supposed to be one of our speakers, but he's out somewhere. So it's such a great honor for us to hear and listen and sit under such great gracings of great people that maybe some of you have never had. We've come a long way with Bishop and we've, yeah, we've come a long way with him. And uh, such a blessing. Thank you for what, Bishop, you have done to my county. These people know that I come from Kiambu County. And thank you for what you have done. You have labored hard and worked so hard. Today, it's very easy for us to go and start Bible studies in such areas. It's very easy for us to go and, and preach. Yet, when you went there to pioneer the work of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, can I surprise you? Half an acre was costing four shillings and 70 cents, and nobody bought it. I know now you are, 
You know how many of know of the digwa? How many know today how much it cost? One of, if you have a piece of land there, everybody is looking for that land, nobody would buy it. Bishop, if you get a chance, you share your testimony and tell us about the spiritual part. And I would urge you, uh, Bishop, and that, because I'm intending to put some of the fathers, especially the ones that I found preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in this nation, if we can have a sitting and bring the younger generation. <laughs> that they may understand the price, the price of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, you are so privileged today. You know, we talk about gracing uh, Pastor Hans this morning. You spoke about grace. And uh, you have heard me say, I wanna, one of the days I'm going to teach and preach on grace. Some of us are riding on grace. The one Paul said, you'll be beneficiary of the grace of God that is upon. That's what Paul says it. But there are those who worked, who fought. They fought battles, confrontations. It was never easy. They walked. They didn't have back left cars. And thank you, Bishop, so much for honoring this invite today that you could come to be with us. I know very soon we shall announce to something that we are praying about with uh, uh, Bishop Mother and, and Bishop Lai and Excellency is also a backup in the team. And soon we will let you know about it because we sense that God is about to do something in our nation. God is about to do something. God is about to birth something eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God is about to do in this nation. Christ is coming back to be the chief cornerstone of our nation. So with the joy of the Lord, would you help me welcome Bishop? And just to give you a background of where I'm coming from, because this will help in the message that I want to give you, I am from Kiambu here. My name is Bishop Thomas, like you heard. My hometown is Timau. That's in the middle. I tell people here I'm a missionary. But I happen to be a resident there now. So, and uh, just to give you a background, a bit of background, story of the whole thing. In 1986, I left this country after having been itinerant minister for about 12 years. I left this country with my wife to go to Scotland. Uh, I happened to be an associate pastor there of a PhD church. But in 1987, the Lord said, I want you to go back home. I said, God, what? Surely. <laughs> My wife had just finished her master's. And uh, she, I mean, she had a ready market. I was being offered a very big church to pastor at that time. But the Lord knows how to upset our programs. My goodness. He said, I want, you, I, want, I want you to go home. And so after a bit of arguing without success, uh, we came back. We came back at the end of 87. And uh, when we came back, the Lord said, and I don't want you to stay far from, Kiam from Nairobi. I said, God, surely. That's very good because I'll be tr I'm going back to my itinerant ministry. 
and I'll be traveling all over, so it's easy to travel from Nairobi. Uh, little did I know that that's not we, what he intends. And uh, long story short, my wife was to go to teach in Kenyatta University. Uh, but the Lord said, don't go far. So I talked to my friend who was the TSC secretary that time. And she was posted here in uh, since, I mean, uh, senior chief Koinange, up in Banana. And so that's where we, we went to stay. Josh was born that, you know, in Banana in 1988, March. So we are there, and uh, I'm preparing to go back to my itinerant ministry. And the Lord says, and I want you to go and start a church in Kiambu. I said, no. <laughs> Please, no. No. Because of several reasons. Number one, I have never pioneered a church. So I know I'm going to fail. And I know you don't like people failing you. But, I, but, but I'm going to fail you. He said, I want you to go to Kiambu. And by the way, as I talk like this, I know I'm prophesying into somebody's life. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I ended asking God, are you serious? He said, yes. I told God, all right, first reason, I never started a church, so I'll fail you. Second reason, uh, you know Kiambu is the murder capital of this nation. <laughs> and it was. It was that time. It was. If you ask somebody like, you know, this woman of God, Reverend Kathy Kiona, because she comes from there, that was the murder capital of, of the country. The crime rate was so high. And I even know of people that were posted there by the government and they resigned instead of going there. It was that bad. It was the drug capital. I mean, took, Kiambu was the news every single day. So I said, God, surely... I can't do that. He told me, I want you to go to Kiambu. Right? I said the third reason. Third reason why I'm, I, I, I should not go there. The third reason is, that is the preacher's graveyard. <laughs> I, would, I had, had so many people tell me that... So-and-so went to Kiambu, he lost his ministry. So-and-so went to Kiambu and uh, uh, lost his family. I mean, he lost his marriage. So-and-so went to Kiambu, this and this happened, all right? So the Lord said, I want you to go and start a church in Kiambu. I said, okay, can we have a bargain? Okay, I'll start a church but why don't I go to either Timau or go to, I mean, either go to Meru or go to Nanyuki? Because if I happen to fail, I can easily go home, pick a bag of potatoes, at least, please. I, I mean, I had no idea of success, I'll tell you today. And, but then he said, all right, I want Kiambu. So I started praying. And for one solid year, one year, I remember when I agreed that I would go to Kiambu, the Lord told me, get me, my, get me your diary. And my diary was packed with meetings. I'm talking about packed. From January all the way to December and even into the following year. Okay, and then 
he told me, cancel this one. Cancel this one. Cancel this one. January was empty. <laughs> Cancel this one. Cancel this one. And this one. February was empty. He came to March. I said, devil, get out of here. In the name of Jesus. This can't be God. This cannot be God. And I took my diary and threw it off and said, devil, I think we talk outside now. <laughs> the Lord told me there is no devil here. There's no devil here. And he reminded me of Mark chapter 3. Listen to this. When Jesus called his disciples, he called them fast that they may be with him. He did not call them to go out and preach. He called them, number one, that they may be with him. And he told me, I, I spent 40 years with Moses in the wilderness. 40 good years. I spent 13 years with Paul. Yeah. In the, you know, in the backyard of Damascus. 13 years. I said, okay. Uh, I hope February you are going to leave something. And then he told me, you cancel this. Then you cancel this. You cancel the February, I mean, April was gone. I said, God, are you sure? He said, all right. Cancel everything all the way to December. <laughs> and that's what I did. Then I started to pray. Why did I pray so hard? Number one, I was desperate. I knew if God does not come in, I have no chance. Of succeeding in that city. I had zero chance. Zero. And I prayed. I fasted. And the Lord started to direct me to do things I never knew existed. When, uh, I, when I was doing my master's much later. That's when I heard about spiritual mapping. But, you know, the Lord told me, when he, I want you to go to that city. And I want you to go and ask, number one, the history of the city. And once you get the history of the city, you will be able to know the demonic altars that have been in the city. And sure enough, there were many. There were many. There were many. If I start to talk to you about those altars, you'll be amazed. Because I'll give you an example. Just as you enter Kiambu, you know, after Kist, and then there is the river, there is an estate, a new estate on this side. That estate is sitting on a mass grave site. There is a lot of blood that was crying from that ground. I don't want to name many others, but I started walking throughout the city for one year. One year. And then from there, uh, we began this, the church at the beginning of 89. The church began very, very well, but somewhere after about Five months, I started to know something is funny. About five months. And uh, as we were praying, the Lord talked to us about a witch that lived in that city. Mama Jane. That was her name. <laughs> okay, all right, just in case you didn't hear, tell your neighbor, Mama Jane.
Mama Jane was not just another witch. She was a territorial witch. There are so many people, I mean, so many senior government officers that would actually come there so that she would do her thing. Many pe people used to come from everywhere. And then I, I discovered that she would, she would come at night to the place where we used to worship and do her thing. And uh, at, during that time, her house was just next to the road. If you go to Kiambu, the, 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 the municipal office, I mean the county government offices, just a distance of about 500 meters on this side, that's where she lived. That devil doesn't mean want me to talk about this. <laughs> My God. I love this. I love this. During that time, there is no one single week that we do not have an accident anywhere between two to three hundred meters from her house during that time. And you, people would be crushed. You would see broken bones, but there was no blood. Look at your neighbor, tell him, these things are real. <laughs> they are real. So we prayed. And the kind of prayer that we started praying was chain fasting. I fast today, you fast tomorrow, the other one the other day. The one who fasted yesterday and the one who will fast tomorrow would cover the one fasting on that day. The one on duty is covered by the one of tomorrow and the one of yesterday. We started five of us. We became nine. We became 15. We went to 20-something. 20, 20 we were 23 years. And then we went on like that. When we became 20, when we became 15, we said, all right, two per day. When we became, we became 23, we said, all right, three per day. And we gave an ultimatum. Either Mama Jenny will get saved or you leave town. That was it. If you stay long, it will not be very good with you. And we declare that over Kiambu. That time we would also do what we call prayer demarcation. you got to demarcate the land God has given you. So we would write stakes. Once we write stakes, I mean, we write scriptures on stakes, and we would drive them in strategic places of the city. Later, I was to do that you know, the whole of Kiambu, and much later, there, 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 there were some instructions that pertained to this nation. And I, I, I went to almost every county. No, all of them. Not almost. Every single county. With another assignment that was similar to that. And uh, as we did that, there happened to be an accident whereby two children belonging to one mama were knocked down by a vehicle. Again, there was no blood. This time, because the atmosphere had been stirred up, there was a big uproar and people came from all over and it, they started to say, no, it's Mama Jane. It's Mama Jane. The police had to come very quickly. And uh, when they came, they were told, go inside that house. Go inside there and tell us what happens there. Some were saying you will meet skulls there. Go in there. Okay? 
The police had to oblige. So they went. And when they went in, in one of the rooms, they shot a huge snake. Tell your neighbor, these things are real. <laughs> Tell somebody, welcome to planet Earth. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. They are real. They carried the snake with them to the police station. <laughs> then, together with the Mama Jane, they know what she, they did, but uh, that woman left town. <laughs> she came to live here in Gong. Gong, here. <laughs> okay. Anybody from Gong, we bless you. Much later, much later, after one year, she decided to come back. Three months later, she was dead. Kiambu was not growing. It started to grow. She told you how much a plot costed those days. When I went, because I happened to, come to, to, to stay in the Degwa, the people there were telling us that a share which had two plots of about one and a half acres was costing 444 shillings. One and a half acres. Today, one portion, less than th about three quarters of an acre, is 100 million Kenya shillings. The town exploded. 